my channel. My name is Liz and this is Liz Arts and Crafts and today I'm going to try something I've been wanting to revisit if you will and that something is knit color work. Yes, I'm going to try to knit some color work. Can she do it? Yes, she can. Here's what I've done before. So this was definitely my first attempt at color work. And it turned out okay. Um, but it's pretty bad. This was over a year ago. And I did one other color work piece, which was the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar. And that one turned out so bumpy that it made me not want to try color work anymore. However, I recently got a subscription box for the Hooks and Needles subscription box, and within it was a color work project. So let me show you what was in it. This video is sponsored by Hooks and Needles, the yarn subscription box for either crochet or knit or both. And it's good for either beginners or more advanced fiber artists. And you can just explore new products and new fibers and it brings it right to your doorstep. Every box comes with yarn and supplies and also a crafting book where it has three projects that you could start with right away using the supplies in your box. Just so you know, if you order a box, it'll have different things in it than my box because they change seasonally. And also this is a like no hassle subscription box and you can cancel it at any time. So it's pretty flexible. Go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description to a code Liz20 to get 20% off your first subscription box from Hooks and Needles. Also, just so you know, these boxes only ship within the US. Let's get back to the video. Here's my box. I still have all of I had a, got a crochet box and a knitting box. Here we go. So project came with some yarn that's like pink and green and also came with some circular five millimeter needles and it comes with like a project book and in my project book this month it is this adorable bag are you kidding me so i'm gonna try to make this bag although what worries me is like it looks a little big <laughs> so like I've gone up to like 20 rows wide or whatever, and this looks like a little bit wide. So I'm thinking, since I'm such a newbie, I'm gonna do a smaller version of the bag where I just do like one flower for each side. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna read through the instructions and get started. I'll show you guys me trying because I'm worried it's going to be a disaster, but. Okay, so I have my yarns and I have my book open. It says to start with the light pink one. The um, instructions are color coded. Like it says like knit eight, eight in pink and then one in green, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to do a long tail cast on. I'm supposed to cast on, um, what did I say I was going to do? 18. Okay, I got my stitches casted on. Next row is to just, oh, knit, knit 18 and then purl 18. All right, okay, we did the pearl side. I think we're getting out of the color work part. So like, okay, I'm gonna read like the paragraph about like what to do. Tells you how to secure your yarn on the wrong side. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but okay. I think I just have to do one green stitch the first time, so. I think I'm stupid, guys. I really do. Because to have this centered, I need an odd number of stitches. Why did I do 18? So I'm going to restart. <laughs> this is not the <laughs> freaking pattern's fault. This is me.
Okay, so I moved outside because knife out and I'm gonna try to add the second color. In case you didn't catch on by now, by the way, this is not a tutorial of any sort and I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, officially starting my color work journey. Look at it. Suggest knotting my yarn when I add a new color in. So I'm doing that. And then I did started this step. You okay? Um I started the stem. I'm gonna drop. Let me see if what it says about changing colors is anything. Twist the yarns of different color every time they meet in order to avoid the holes. So this one, I just don't really know what a twist means. <laughs> oh, I think I might see how to twist it now. So. I'm Picking up the next color, dropping the old color, but ensuring they're twisted. Looking good. Okay, I'm gonna go inside for my next rogue. Calvin's getting up. I truly don't really get the floats. <laughs> they have pictures though. So maybe I'll try to do the pictures because I think it has like the knit side and the pearl side, like how to float. So let's do that. Okay. Thank you guys for joining me for like helping me conquer my fear of knit color work. I really want to be a knit color work person and I really want to try my color my, my crochet color work patterns on knitting. Okay. So I'm to a color change. So how am I going to pick this up? I'm going to lay this this way and pick this up this way and it'll like catch it. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but it's not really about the look. Just believe me, I've caught this pink one. I'm gonna hold it down here. Okay, I'm not gonna hold it. I'll tighten it in a second. I'm gonna pearl. Okay, tighten that a little bit. That pink one. Like I don't know if that counts as like the twist or not. I'm supposed to do at the beginning. Okay, and now I'm going to pearl a couple. Okay, I'm gonna pearl two, and now I'm gonna try to catch it. So. Let me get my picture out. I don't know if that picture is for pearl side or not. Um, okay, I'm gonna hold, just gonna do what it says. It says to hold them together and put your needle through and I think that's what it means. I think it means to like work your working yarn, but like have your non-working yarn caught there for the vibes. I think I caught it. See that? It's caught. <laughs> okay, 
so you can kind of see this. I pulled up the I they have like a QR code and I scanned it and I have the pattern on my computer now. So that's nice. Cause I was gonna start like crossing off rows, but I didn't want to ruin the pattern. But now that I know I can keep it digitally forever if I download this page or keep the QR codes or something, I can um I won't feel bad. I'm gonna just start crossing off what row you are highlighted. Um Perfect. <laughs> or I can reference it here. So that's fun. Um, it's literally the same thing, but it's also bigger and the like pictures are high quality. So I'm just going to keep going, but yeah. Um, cue a fast paced mode. <laughs> ditch a bag because while I can go back that would have sucked I should like read the whole row before I start like what am I doing here alrighty back on track <laughs> I've arrived at the next crossroads in my journey. I finished the stem of the flower and it was all looking so good. Good, it's in quotes because I don't think it's looking amazing, but like it's all looking good until the very top of the stem. Two rows back, like a knot or something made itself known. What is that? And it like pushed itself forward. So I don't even know what happened there. I don't know what happened and I'm kind of annoyed by it. But it's so cute. Like the pattern's looking really cute. I don't know how I twisted that piece of yarn. But I don't know if I'll make the full bag. I might make this into like um just a little tiny wall hanging like my other ones, or a coaster, it's cotton, so it would be good as a coaster. Okay, so I finished the flower. So that's what the flower is supposed to look like. And this is what mine looks like. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> like, I think it looks good. I didn't block it or anything. So like keep that in mind as you're looking at it. But like um a few things I notice are like it's a little bumpy, but that might like even out with the block slash wash. Um that knot really bothers me in the stem that I made. Um and then I noticed that up here on the flower stem, I didn't do a great job twisting my yarn. Um, also, it kind of bulks up where I float my yarn. So that's another thing, but I wanted to show you the back. So I think I did a pretty good job floating my yarn here. Um, I tried to do it every two or three. Sometimes I forgot though, and I did it every four. Still don't know how to twist. 
Yay, I'm happy I did this. Let me see what they suggest we do next. I'm probably not going to do it. Oh my god, they do an I-cord bind off. Never done that before, but maybe right now is the time to learn it. So let's see. It says cast on three stitches. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. I'm doing my first I cord bind off and I'm really stressed out. Oh, shoot. Okay. It almost went haywire there. Okay, I'll check back in when I'm done, but I actually might be doing this right. I really don't know if I did this right, y'all. Why is there a giant hole there? What did I do? <laughs> it's neat. It's certainly neat and tidy, so I don't really care, but we're on a learning grind, okay? It's not bad. Like, it definitely has character. And it will be cute in my room as decor somewhere. I think we did good. And I think we can get better. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching me fumble around trying to get better. So leave me tips down below or encouragement. I need both. And thanks again for Hooks and Needles for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, you definitely should. Click the link in my description. Tune in next uh, Thursday. I'll come out with more videos. Feel free to subscribe for more, but I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.